Good morning, it's Wednesday, February 17th, and this is the Herald Reviews podcast, The Daily Chirp. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories, events in the community, local history, sports, and more. Today, we're highlighting Jesse Morales, who was the fire chief in two cities in two countries, Naco, Arizona in the United States and Naco, Sonora in Mexico. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Lawley from the Lawley Automotive Group, and we've stocked up on inventory at all of our dealerships. If you've been thinking about a new car, we've got the deal for you on a new Buick, GMC, Chevrolet, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Nissan, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. You don't have to go to Tucson or Phoenix to buy a new vehicle. We're your hometown dealer since 1995. We'll beat the big city dealers in price, and our customer service is small town dealer friendly. Come into any one of the Lawley dealerships today, or shop lollycars.com and see why nobody beats a Lawley deal. Nobody. Before we begin, some local history. In 1886, Isabella Greenway was born. She is best known as the first U.S. Congresswoman in Arizona history and as the founder of the Arizona Inn of Tucson. She was also a bridesmaid at the wedding of Eleanor and Franklin D. Roosevelt. Today's history is brought to you by Benson Hospital. Benson Hospital's comprehensive rehabilitation team strives to get you back on your feet and improve your lifestyle, offering physical, occupational, and speech therapy. For more information, visit BensonHospital.org or call 520-586-2262. Now our feature story. Jesse Morales is the fire chief in two cities in two countries. But for the 45-year-old Morales, being fire chief in Naco, Arizona and Naco, Sonora in Mexico just seemed like a natural fit. It all began when Morales' grandfather began serving with Naco Fire in Arizona in 1959. Morales was taught about the fire service, and as a teenager, he began helping out at the fire station. He said that back in the day, they were one of the only fire departments that would respond to Naco Sonora. Over the years and after working with his grandfather, Morales formed relationships with different fire chiefs and mayors in the Mexican border town of about 6,400 people. He described a time in Mexico during which fire chiefs served at the will of whichever political party was in power. And when Naco Sonora mayor Andrea Ramos was elected about three years ago, she began introducing changes slowly. One of them was the creation of a fire board that would be responsible for naming the town's fire chief. In November, Ramos asked Morales if he would consider working for her as the fire chief in the 13-man volunteer department. The challenges Morales was faced with had little to do with the physical task of driving back and forth between the two Nacos and everything to do with a department on the Mexican side that was in dire need of working equipment, from water hoses to fire trucks. The firefighters, known as bomberos in Spanish, didn't even have uniforms. Morales' first order of business when he took the job was to appoint a deputy fire chief. He chose 31-year-old firefighter Francisco Flores. On his first day, he did an inspection and said that they were basically starting from scratch. And he wasn't kidding. When he arrived, they had about four 50-foot hoses that leaked more water than came out of the actual nozzle. They had one truck that leaked, a truck that was broken, and a truck that hadn't been serviced in a year. Other fire departments in the country pitched in with monumental donations of equipment and even fire trucks, Morales said. He said Bisbee Fire, Fry Fire District, and the San Jose Fire District helped immensely. Even though many of the pieces of donated equipment are outdated, Morales said that they would be welcomed at Naco Sonora Fire Department. Deputy Chief Flores, who actually helped recruit Morales, said one of the reasons he wanted Morales as the fire chief in his town is because he knew Morales could get things done. And he was right. Thanks for listening. Before we continue, a quick message from our sponsors, Prestige Family Living. At Prestige Assisted Living at Sierra Vista, we aim to provide our residents ways to stay active and engaged through our Ageless Grace Fitness and Wellness programming. Join us every Friday at 1030 a.m. for free online Ageless Grace classes. Visit NotYourGrandma'sNursingHome.com to sign up today. Now we'd like to highlight the annual chocolate tasting fundraiser by the Friends of the Copper Queen Library, which has gone virtual this year. Brought to you by Apex Network Physical Therapy. Voted Best of Cochise County 2020, Apex Network provides exceptional care to the Sierra Vista and Benson communities. Choose Apex Network for all of your physical therapy needs. To learn more, go to apexnetworkpt.com. Though the annual in-person chocolate tasting fundraiser by the Friends of the Copper Queen Library is a no-go, people can still support the nonprofit by ordering treats from C's Candies through the end of the month. To give back to all the healthcare workers at the Copper Queen Community Hospital who have been working overtime to care for residents during the pandemic, people can also send candy directly to them. 
Though the event could not proceed in its usual in-person format, the most important thing is to maintain a connection to the community in the event's 30th year and remind local residents what the library still had to offer. Until the end of the month, you can visit bisbeechocolatetasting.com to place an order. Next, an upcoming event in our community that you should know about, brought to you by our sponsors, Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You are probably spending a lot more quality time at home these days, keeping you and your family safe. And that can present some opportunities that you usually don't experience, like maybe <laughs> laughing together at a funny movie, or screaming together at a scary movie, pitching in to make a special dinner, or maybe you're keeping in touch with friends and relatives and other places on your devices. And it just so happens that many of the activities we're sharing with each other are made possible by electricity. At Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, we know that you are depending on us both for fun and serious needs. And we want you to know that we're here for you day and night, sunshine or storm, easygoing times or trying times like now, making sure you're getting the power that you need every day to meet your needs. For over 85 years, through all kinds of tough times, we've been there for our members. And even though you may not see us, we're here for you now. Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, owned by those we serve. Today, Cochise College is hosting a free virtual lecture called Fry Pioneer Cemetery. It starts at noon and is an hour long. You'll get a chance to learn the history of the early settlers who founded the Fry Pioneer Cemetery back in 1919. You can sign up at cochise.edu under the Spring 2021 Virtual Brown Bag Lecture section. Before we go, we'd like to take a moment to remember the life of Catherine Christine Maxine Bean. Catherine passed away at the age of 23. She was a mother, a daughter, a girlfriend, and a friend. Catherine leaves behind her daughter Cara, her parents, her brothers, uncles, and her boyfriend. She was born at Phoenix Children's Hospital three and a half months early, weighing only one pound and 14.8 ounces, but she grew up to be a beautiful and strong young woman. Catherine was a proud Girl Scout, a great bowler, and she enjoyed choir. She graduated from Buena High School in 2017. Catherine was a friend to many, and she had a natural ability to make friends easily. Even Catherine's neighbors really adored her. No words can say enough except that she was loved and will be missed deeply. Thank you for taking a moment with us to remember Catherine's life. Thanks for tuning in to the Herald Review podcast today. Join us again on Thursday. And remember, the Herald Review is here for you with local news you can trust. For more information on any of the stories you heard about today, visit us at myheraldreview.com. Right now, you can become a member starting at just $1.99 per week. Want to stay up to date on what's going on? Join Neighbor, your trusted neighborhood community. We asked, you answered. What is your motive for joining this forum? Neighbor Wayne said, I like the fact it's monitored and has real journalism input. The primary reason is that respectful communication is mandatory and we have it. It's hometown content. Join the conversation. Visit nabur.myheraldreview.com. Mm -hmm.